next speaker has the privilege of uh, speaking in front of people, uh, eating, eating their desserts and drinking their. So the next speaker has to deal with the the, the recurring noise of the um, of the spoon on, on the in the cup. Ding, ding, ding. Next kind of uh, it's musical. It, it's good if people are not falling asleep because they, it's so relevant. If you, if you happen to see someone falling asleep, you just go. Ah. Hey, you should try something. I'm going to speak about one company which you might know a little bit less than the other, Nexmo. Uh, uh, they uh, just check out their website, nexmo.com. They basically they do uh, messaging, SMS and things like that, but for enterprises. So basically, the way I understood it is, is if you have a, a big application which sends uh, tens of thousands or millions of, of SMSs, they are the way to go. They are the uh, they have good price. They have uh, obviously the architecture who who, who does that. And um, so thanks to them for uh, sponsoring, I was going to say the show. You see, Scotty is the podcaster in me uh, uh, starting here, but sponsoring the conference. Um, let's go to the next one. My, uh, yeah, my, my uh, yearly frog. Um, one of the things I love in this conference I was saying last year is that uh, for one thing, I can practice all my languages. Um, French is not really hard to practice because it's my mother tongue. Um, but why, why am I saying that one day frogs will kill me? Well, I will explain it. First of all, this picture over there, you, you look like a criminal. Um, um, it's, um, the way you look at it's like, I'm going to kick your butt. And I'm sure this is the way you hire people. Um, the next talk is the only descriptionless talk in the universe. If you have tried to understand what this talk was about, um, it's the same for me. Um, after <laughs> I've, I've tried to have him um, put a description on the, um, and no, I, it, it never really worked. It, it's actually, ver it's not that easy to work with, with, with French people because they are hard to deal with or educate or whatever, they're French. With Germans, it's actually easy. You shout at them and they listen. Uh, but um, with English people, that kind of works in the middle of French. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying that you are a cross between uh, French and, and, and Germans, but... Um, um, so, um, Damien's history belongs to the so-called Labo Apple at Sup Info, which is a big school in France, where I actually met um, him via another guy, which was a pumpcaster. For those who don't know, pumpcast is my podcast, which is in a zombie mode since a few years. It means the website is on live, but the podcast is dead. Um, and interestingly enough, uh, uh, un unlike Alex, where is Alex from Bello? Unlike Alex, this guy understands me. Uh, <laughs> but it, you know what? It might be because we speak the same language and also because he never asked me why. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so, and last but not least, this is, um, we have to thank Damien for one thing last year, which is that Damien recommended Zeno last year. And for those who, who, of you who have been here uh, watching at Zeno's talk, I'm so sad he couldn't make it this year again because it was super awesome. So without further ado, let's uh, give the mic to Damien Gosset and give him a round of applause. Hmm. Okay. So it seems I understand you, so... It's, it's a beginning. Well, I, maybe I'm the only French here. Um, for my bad, yes. Description was a bit long to arrive, so here I am today and the description is not here. May, maybe it wanted to kill me, I don't know, but uh, here I am, don't worry. <laughs> I will not leave. Um, bon appétit, um, finish your lunch, don't worry. I like the, the spoon, the noise and everything, no problem. It's musical, as he said, so. Uh, it's, it's, not a, it's not a big deal. So, uh, my talk is about product design. Um, well, in fact, we're all developers here, or we're all linked to developers, which means we have the same experience with clients, with our products, with all the questions we're always constantly asking about why are we doing this? And uh, it makes obvious to me that even if we are developers, even if we know why we are doing this job, we are always doing the same mistakes again and again and again. We rush to the code and then we ask the question, um, maybe I miss a feature or maybe I wanted to do something completely different. Let's erase everything and rebuild. Does it sound familiar for some of you? 
Well, um, at least it sounds familiar to me, and when I built Arctiplex, I started to have a small team, and I experienced the same with a small team. It's always the same mistakes. So if you take time, sometimes it may help you to increase the quality of the product and increase the quality of what you do. So product design, what it is. I I'm sure you can find a bunch of different definitions across the web, and I'm sure you can find a lot of courses about how to design a product. Various definitions, and at the end, no one knows what it is really. I mean, product design is just how you design the product. So today I won't pretend I have all the good practices you should follow. I just pretend that I found some practices, I like it, it works for me, and if you have others, I'll be glad to hear it. So don't hesitate to uh, have a talk with me after the presentation, I'd like to exchange with you. So, a lot of things, but the first in product design is success for me. If you take time to design a product, you will try to succeed in building a great product. It's success, it's less bug and fast time cutting. Why less bug and why fast time cutting? Because if you think before cutting, you will make less errors. Better execution and better product, because if you take time to ask questions before starting a project, you will lead to a better execution. You will ask different kind of people different questions, like the marketing guy, like the CEO, like the coders, and like maybe uh, the designer, which is a huge part of the work. So even if you are a freelancer and you have all these different roles in your hands, you should take time to sit down a bit and write down your questions. Better execution, a better execution, a better execution. It is one of my goal every day, because if you execute well, you will have a great product at the end. Not maybe at the beginning, but at the end, you will see the difference. Don't rush and draft everything in the life, it does not work. And happiness, because when you're thinking about what you're doing and when you find why you are doing it, at the end of the day, even if you're tired, even if you spent 12 hours coding on this keyboard like nightmares with this new iOS 7 SDK and everything is broken, and at the end of the day, you're happy because you know why you spend so much time on this specific feature. So this is it. And of course, as I mentioned, success is different for any kind of people. Uh, for me, it's not money, it's not uh, being in the top of the charts of the App Store and anything, but if you succeed in being happy in your job, in being happy in what you're building and why you are building it, I mean, well, it's kind of success, no? So, how does it work? Uh, for me, I have this process. Like, I start with an ID and I end on the App Store or I end by shipping the product. But between the two, I don't rush in the code. So what I like is brainstorming, exchange ideas, which is cool because when you brainstorm, it's always a good occasion for a beer. So don't hesitate. Ask people, uh, ask your friends, ask your family, ask your colleagues, anyone, and don't be shy. I mean, no one will stole you this one dollar million, one million dollar ID you have in mind. Uh, the worst you can have is a greater ID in feedback. You ask the question, what do you think about this ID? Um, what, what do you think about this social network I'm building? What do you think about this productivity tool I'm building? Does it sound familiar to you? Uh, yeah, maybe. And the guy will be able to tell you if in his work he has a specific tool working better than what you are expecting to do. And it's always valuable for you because it will help you to build a better product. After that, spend some time uh, on a paper, or if you don't like paper, spend some time on your iPad and draw the stuff. Try to wireframe your product. Not all the details, but wireframe the product. One time, I read something very interesting, which was um, a company using huge pens for whiteboards and the sketching using the huge pens. Because they say with a huge pen, you cannot focus on details. 
You cannot draw the small button. You cannot draw uh, all the details on uh, your table view and so on. So you just have to focus mainly on your window and the uh, interactions between the buttons. Uh, this idea sounds, sounds great. So after that, an empty app, try your mock-up, try to see how it is to uh, end it in, in your hands. And uh, after that, you'll think about UI design, all the details, all the color, and everything. It's the work of the designer, of course, but it's our work to guide him in the proper direction. Code, pretty obvious. And after that, some testing. And after that, we have to think about the whole product. Well, if we the App Store, we have all these marketing things and uh, all the descriptions of the translations and everything. This is big. In fact, this is a lot bigger than what we expect. So about this brainstorming, let's start by the beginning. Brainstorming, sharing ideas. Well, it's important. Why is it important? Because if you do not define at the beginning your product, you will end by coding your features without knowing how you should complete it. So take your time to sit down. Do not underestimate, sorry, do not underestimate it. It takes a lot of time. And the first idea is not always the better. So just exchange with people. If you are not building this app for you, you are building this app as a contractor for a client. So go meet him in his office, at your office. Take Skype, take a phone call, something and exchange. Why do you want to build this product? Always this question, why do you want to build this product? You have a goal in mind. You want to reach a specific point. So why are you doing it? Because you want to make life easier for people. Because you want to help them communicate easily. Because you want to improve the productivity in a company. Because they want to change the business model, and they want to highlight on a specific point. You have a lot of whys. You just have to find your why. And when you know why you're doing it, it will help you designing the product you want. So this is always by question. Question, questions, questions, and questions. Questions your customers, questions your clients. Focus on your target. Your target could be employees of the companies, it could be uh, people in the street. It could be you and me, developers. It's not the same kind of people. So it's not the same target. So it's not the same kind of product you're building. And it's not the same communication. Here, if you want to reach developers, it's good to be in conferences. It's good to uh, take part of the ecosystem, take part of the community, and exchange ideas, technically speaking. If you want to reach anyone in the street, like, Facebook, Twitter, I don't know, Instagram, whatever, take any kind of success. You have to think what makes people use this kind of service. Instagram, because they like to share photos, and they like to share photos easily. So you have to answer this question, why are we doing this, and what is our target, always? When it starts to be clear, and when you are trying to imagine what the solution would be, I mean, the app, the website, and everything, and how everything will be connected, well, step back and simplify everything. How could I do it simpler? Always. How could I do it simpler? Because if I have three steps to reach my goal, is there a way to do it in two steps? Or even in one step? being more human. We're building the technology for humans, not the contrary. So take time, simplify, and start again. Exchange, talk, try, blah, blah, blah. And you will try to have a very clean and pure uh, product. And at the end, do not forget, passion never fades. If you're passionate about what you do, if you really want to reach your goal, this why, it will help you with people. And it will help you not to spend some days just uh, turning bad ideas in your mind like, I won't make it. You will make it. Passion makes everything possible. So this is for, for, for the brainstorming. Take time to talk with people. 
make something that people want. They want to use your product because, because they have something to attend. Always specific on the why. One guy called Simon Sinek, like one of the best guy I know about building a product, like a mentor for me, always said that people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. So if you focus on this why, you should find a proper reason for this guy tomorrow to buy your product. So go on the street and speak with them. Ask what they think about their ID. Show your wireframes, don't be shy. They will not tell it, they are not developers. They are the future, they are the users. So ask them, what do you think about it? If you have a mockup, a wireframe on your iPad, on your iPhone, or even on your Mac, go out the office and try it with the sun. Try it in the street, in situation. If I'm building an app for the iPhone, I will use my iPhone in the dark. I will use my iPhone in sunlight. I will use my iPhone at the pool, everywhere. So try, move with your product and see how it is. It's the best way to get feedback. So go meet your client. When you have this wireframe, send them some files, PNG, PSD file, whatever, and go meet them. What do you think about it? Because if you call them all the time, with the voice, you have some indication of how much they like it or how much they hate it. But when you f see people in the face, in the eyes, they can lie to you. They can say, well, mm, it's okay. I, it's not okay. Okay is not a valid answer. Okay is not good. So you want to reach great, so just talk with people in the eye, and you will see if they like it or not. And they will be able maybe to express themselves in a different way. Sometimes they just not feel it. You know, you're shipping a product to a customer and uh, it's like, hmm, it's fair, it works, I have all the features, but I don't feel it. There is something that's not good in the app. Something is wrong, but I don't know why. And maybe we, they will be able to point with their finger what is the problem. If you're on the phone, you can't have it. So meet the people. We're doing a job for people. We're doing a job for humans, and humans talk to each other. So go meet them. Don't forget that. When you're good with your mockups, your wireframe, and you're sure about it, it's time to focus on UX design. And God, a few years ago, I wouldn't never imagine how much UX design is, one, passionating, and two, so important. It's good to have a good design, good colors, uh, great features, great skills at, as a coder, but UX is really everything. It's the way that the user will use your app, how they will be able to reach the goal of your app, how many buttons they will click, how they are disposed in the interface. How are you building this? It's all about UX. So make it useful. They will use the app. They will not try to learn how to use your app. It's why Apple works, right? We all like Apple products because it's, in some point, pretty obvious. I I'm not talking about logic and everything here. <laughs> no, uh, iPhone, iOS, Mac, we use it because it's pretty easy, pretty obvious. So make it useful. And when you're thinking about UX design, it's the good time to raise questions. How are we going to handle this case? How are we going to handle this situation? Uh, what if we want to promote another app? What if we want to push users to buy a specific module using in-app purchase? It's time to raise question now. It's not when we are coding it. So it's time to exchange how the application will display every bit of information you want to push to the user. Uh, it's not after, it's now. We are just designing the product. So raise your question, don't be shy. Um, Always try to do the stuff at this moment. Do not procrastinate. Like, uh, do not push during month your description for objective colon talk. So try to do your best to raise all your questions. Um, at the end of everything, you will have some compromise to do because of the budget, because of the technical aspects sometimes, or 
maybe because you think that your product would be awesome with all these features, but for now it's too much. So you have to compromise and divide it and do the basic, and after you will improve your product with, uh, let's say, advanced feature. So time for compromise, but don't compromise on quality. What people like is really quality. Try your mockup. When it's done, when UX design is done, when your wireframe is done, you, you have a bit of a product. Try it. One app I love for this is App Cooker. Do you use App Cooker? Do you know the app? Who's using it? One people? Okay, good. I love this product. I encourage you to download it. Uh, these guys made an incredible job by just building one iPad app, gathering everything inside. You have the wireframing, you have all the parts about the revenues, the financial, uh, all the parts about the app store description, and of course, all the part about description and everything. So using App Cooker is like using a process. I love this app for, for, for this reason. I use it since maybe two years, I love it. So make your mockup become a real app. App Cooker or uh, a developer or a good designer, you always have a possibility to push your design in your iPad, in your iPhone, in your Mac, and try it, really. You don't have to code it, you just have to uh, display your pictures and move them one after the other. And you'll be able to experience your product. It's very important. Designing a product, drawing an interface is different than experiencing it. You have to feel your product in your hand. Okay, I thought that uh, this drop-down menu will be good, but well, when I have it in my, in my hand, when I try it, it does not work. Okay, it was a good idea. It seemed to be the proper solution. But in fact, no, it does not work. And it's time to see what's wrong in your design. We all do mistakes, all the time, all the time. But it's good to see the mistake before we did the huge job, before we code everything. So it's the good solution. Try your mockup, see how it works. Works fine, good, works bad. Just correct it. Very easy. If you use App Cooker, you love one of their features. They're able to take your pictures and put some area, active area on it. So you can say, this is a button, for example, and if I touch this area, I will push another image. At the end, you have the feeling that your app is live. D don't push it to marketing people. At the end, they say, oh, okay, it's finished, thank you. <laughs> okay, but it, it works well. <laughs> for the demo. When you feel it, when you're sure that it's the proper way to do it, be sure you will have some correction to do. <laughs> Go to UI design. It's time for colors. It's time for uh, details. It's time for all the tiny details we love in our app. What makes a great app is, of course, the quality of the code, but the quality of the details, all the little details. Did you see iOS 7, the number of details they put inside? I, I'm not talking about the blur or everything, but I'm talking about the locker, I'm talking about the small animations, I'm talking about the research, everything. All, all the transparency, all the details you don't see the first time, you just say, hey, well, it works well. Yes, it works well. If you take time to see the animation slowly, you will see why it works well for you. Because you have all these details, which is, kind of a reality, like if I was moving papers like this. So, details, always. It's time to make it beautiful. We make it useful. We made it in UX design. UI design is make it beautiful. You have to give people the attraction to use it when we'll be out. It's time to tease people if you want. If you like to uh, design this beautiful PSD and push it on the web, it's time for that. Pay attention to details. When this is done, you can go to the code. But code is just a beautiful cocktail between skills and passion, always. 
We have to be talented for what we do, of course, and we have to be able to learn and want to learn every day, but we are able to learn every day if we are passionate by what we do. If we are passionate by what we do, we will always want to push further. This detail, this new paradigm I like, this new best practice I found, this new answer I found on Stack Overflow and everything. It's time to be great on what we do every day, coding. So draw the big picture first. Uh, what will be the architecture of my app and what I need to define in my app? What will be the, the core data model, for example? Uh, how many classes will I build? Uh, what kind of object am I doing uh, or dealing with? So draw the big picture of your app. When you have this in mind, or at least on a whiteboard or whatever, um, it's time to divide your work in small parts. In fact, if you try to draw the big picture and uh, develop everything in the same time, uh, you know, we end, it's like a spaghetti meal, and at the end you don't know what's doing what. So let, just divide in small parts. Smaller, 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 smaller part, like one task. I should, for example, make the refresh. I should uh, interrogate the web service on this aspect. I should be able to uh, pass this XML file and everything. So divide in task. When you have the task, attribute the task to someone or attribute the task to yourself if you're a freelancer. And let's say, okay, today I will do three tasks. For example, this one, this one, this one. Let's pick it, code it. If it's done, it works, you erase it. And tomorrow you will do the other task. Like this, you're sure to be clean and organized and you will be happy at the end of the day because at the end of the day, you will know what you did. Today, I did not spend three hours in problems. I spent three hours in problems because I wanted to solve one task. The task I gave to me for today. And I did it. So what was my work today? I finished my task. Glad I did it. Tomorrow, I will make something else. So it's a way to improve your quality, but it's a way to improve your motivation, your passion. You're passionate by what you do, and you're passionate by what you do because you achieve goals. So it's good to divide in small parts and having all this little challenge and all these little successes at the end of the day. If during the code, or not, not if, when during the code, uh, you will see that you don't have time or you don't have the all the technical aspects to achieve what you wanted in terms of features, number of features. It's better to have less feature than all the features, but uh, with a bad execution. So prefer to have less feature at the beginning, but great features. Everything which is in the app is great. Everything which is in the app is polished, finished, and you're proud of it. You don't have this uh, little part in the app where you are ashamed and you say, uh, please, no, don't try this feature. It, it, it's okay, but no, don't try it. You don't have this dark side. You just have the bright side. <laughs> you're happy with what you're shipping. So divide in small parts. Make your features. Every feature is, is great. It's very important. Stay clean, organized, communicate with, with others, with your teammates with your colleagues, maybe with the people who gave you the feedbacks for your ideas. They'll be glad to uh, know that it's moving. Well, if you were on the street and asked to people, maybe you should take their email address or something like this, but <laughs> if they are your friends, obviously you know how to contact them. And uh, yes, use Git, SVN, yeah, I don't know, whatever you want, uh, Git seems uh, Good, I should say GitHub maybe, but uh, you, you, use something. And uh, stay organized in your code source, in your source code, sorry. Don't forget that uh, quality is the best business plan, always. So less features, but polished features, always. And as we are here on, let's say an iOS talk, um, don't forget that we are mobile. And as I used to say, don't forget the KISS with three S. Keep it stupid simple for users and keep it 
secure. We are mobile. People don't like when applications, when developers mess with their privacy data. So you have a bunch of security frameworks on Mac, on iOS. You have a lot of securities out there, SSL, certificates, everything. You have no reason not to use it, right? So secure your applications, secure your data. You'll be safe. Don't try to uh, see, well, maybe someone won't see it. We are always reading stories on Twitter or on the internet about a great product, a great company, and at the end, hey, it seems they are not protecting our data. Or it seems they have uh, some web service request pushing data in clear outside just in the internet. What? We have the post. We don't have to, to use get in HTML request. We have SSL. We are able to uh, encrypt data in our apps. Why don't you use it? So keep it stupid, simple, and secure always. We're talking about mobile. People are using geolocation apps. Uh, people are using private data. They take picture of family moment. They take picture at work. They don't want you to mess with that data. Be sure to be able to assure them that your app is doing great stuff and this is secure. Don't worry, everything is in the box. It's locked and it's locked for you as a user. And one good aspect of that is that when you go to sleep, you will sleep well. So, kiss. Dave and user testing. Developer testing, user testing. Maybe one of the most important parts in coding. Test, test, and test. Developer testing and user testing. Why? Because you make the product. You know where it's wrong. You know where it's good. You know the weak points of the product, and you know where it works. If you are always doing the tests, you won't find all the bug. Pretty obvious. If you're doing the test by a user, they will try everything. They will use their own use case scenario. And maybe they will discover some bugs, you just ignore them. You didn't know it existed. You, you didn't even think that the app could be used this way. So make them test, and don't focus just on dev testing. So test it, really, test it. Test it, test it, test it, okay? A lot of time. And when you think it's finished, when all the tests are done, well, just repeat the operation. Test again. I'm not very convinced by unit tests because it takes time, because it's uh, sometimes complicated. And even if you're good at negotiation, I'm not sure that your client will be okay to pay you for all the amount of tests you are writing before doing the app, which is why it's paying you, right? So if you're not able to do it, just test it in your end and uh, make some mocky testing in your code, try your interface, everything, but you will be able to find some tiny bugs you ignore. You, you can't ignore them. Do not forget the um, localization for your app. Uh, most of the time, we do localization at the end because you finish the app, you have all your strings, so you take your uh, string file and uh, you push it to your translators, which are, I imagine, uh, happy to uh, receive it. And uh, for sure, they know the language. I mean, the people who are going to translate your app in German, in Japanese, in Chinese, they speak this language every day. But are they developers? Are they users? Are they in the software industry? Because the same word can have different meanings. For softwares, it's always a specific vocabulary. So be sure that people who translate your app had already translated other apps or worked in software before. Because we need to be very accurate in the terms we are using in uh, our softwares. So do not forget it. Try it, test it. Push to users. If you have the chance to know some people outside your country, 
in your specific target, you are translating it for Chinese, for example, go and uh, give the opportunity to test to uh, some Chinese people and see how it works. We have a bunch of tools out there. Uh, I don't know, Oki app, uh, flight, um, flight test, I don't remember. Uh, test flight, thank you. We have a lot of tools which helps us to push our builds to uh, the end users. So let's use it and let's see how they handle it, how they feel it, how they experience the product. And if something is wrong, maybe it's because of the translation. It's not maybe because of the UX, maybe because of the translation. Help users to provide feedbacks. If you're just waiting, them to, waiting for them to write you an email, descriptive email, you're wrong. They, they won't make it. Because email, well, we use it all the day, but we are very strange animals in the room. Uh, normal people, they see email as they see later. So they have to take time to write it and everything. Uh, help them to provide support. Maybe in the app, uh, you, you could have one specific button during the development. They click on it and they have a small box. They can type on it and boom, you receive the feedback. Uh, use Twitter, use um, a bug report, bug, a ticket uh, system, whatever, which will help them to give you feedback about what you're doing. You need them. They don't need you. Maybe they did not even think that one day one product or one solution will come and they will love it. You are building what they are going to use. They are not always asking you to build it. So you need them. Help them give you feedback, always. Well, if everything went well, it's time for the App Store or it's time for shipping. Um, if you're doing an enterprise app, it's easier, you don't have to go on this marketing side. But uh, if not, unfortunately, you'll see that uh, the App Store is uh, just uh, like a nightmare. I'm sure we spent some hours here in the room just uh, doing screenshots and uh, writing the descriptions for apps and everything. It takes such an amount of time. And it works for all app stores. I mean, it's the same on the Google Play Store, it's the same on the Mac App Store, it's always the same. So do not underestimate it. It takes a huge amount of work. And it's time to talk with people again. <laughs> I know, it's more talk about, uh, a smaller presentation about talking to people than coding for people. But really, we are doing this for humans. So go talk to people, talk to uh, the marketing guy, talk with your client, and try to synthesize the why. Why did you do this application? When you synthesize it, just go for two lines. Two lines, not more. And the two first lines of the description should be enough to understand why, as a user, I should download your product. All the description is for after. When you catch my attention by these two lines, I will want to read all the description. If the two first lines are just nothing, I won't read the rest. So the two first lines are very important. And if you see the App Store on uh, the Mac, for example, or on the web, sometimes the description is uh, just um, collapsed and uh, you just have the two first lines. So the two first lines are very important. They are the two lines that you see. Um, the keywords are always important too, uh, not because it's like Google, but uh, because sometimes we are searching for expressions. We are not searching for individual words. We're searching for an expression. Uh, I want to uh, display a route, for example. Uh, I want to send images. So, so the expressions are important. And uh, image or images, it's not the same keyword. So maybe take some time to uh, see the trending on Google, the trending on Yahoo, everything. Sum up everything and uh, just read what kind of keywords are the more relevant for your app. If you have to do uh, some digging, I'm sure you can find some app store um, study on this topic too. Translate your app description and translate your screenshot. 
If you're supporting four or five languages in your app, you should have four or five translated description of your app on the App Store. You cannot say, hey, it's too much work for now, let's put this in English for all the world and uh, use the German for Germany. It does not work. If you are using a full language in your app, you translate four times in every language you're using in the app, supporting in the app. And the same for screenshots. You have a lot of recommendations from Apple for the screenshots uh, on the App Store documentation. But honestly, the first recommendation is do not mess with the screenshot. Use the Chinese screenshot for the Chinese language. It's pretty obvious, but just check on the App Store how many apps has the wrong screenshot with the wrong language. You break everything here. We are building for quality and we're expecting something great. That's why we are building this product. That's why they are buying our product. So translate everything and encourage users to contact you. Again, you need them to give you feedbacks. Even if the app is finished, even, even if you think it's polished, I'm sure you will improve your app in the next weeks, month, and you will be glad to get feedback from the user because maybe they have an idea you don't have. Maybe they will point you a bug you did not see. Um, you need them to be able to contact you, and an email address is not enough, again. So think about it. How am I able in my app, or how am I able in my system, my product, on my website, or whatever, how am I able to ask them what they think about my product? And how are they going to help me building a better product the next time, better UX, better UI, and maybe better code if I left some bug inside? Take as much feedback as possible, always. It's why we are doing it. Well, doing it for humans. This is it. So again, stay humble. Uh, you did the best. You you could for this product. Uh, you, you, you took so much effort on this, uh, so much nights, cutting and everything. Don't break everything at the end. Stay connected with people and ask them what they think. So if I had to summarize, product design is key, but uh, yes, passion makes everything. So stay passionate. Thank you. All right, we have time for like uh, one question since the French guy went over the time again. There's no way to educate this guy. Um, yeah, we have time for one question if somebody has one question. Otherwise, just grab him. And uh, yeah, and uh, we'll be back here in like 15 minutes or 20 minutes. Yeah, no, 15. 15. 10? 15? All right, thank you again, Damien. And, oh yeah, by the way, I just wanted to mention that uh, I tweeted about that, but uh, I'm, I'm sad that uh, I mentioned that before introducing him that he wasn't asking the question why, and it turns out he asked the question why, so I might be the problem. Um, one last note is uh, some of you guys may have got uh, a, a t-shirt this morning, which is actually a ladies' t-shirt, and since uh, there is only two of us, here in the room being ladies, you might want to check your bag because they mixed up at the entrance and you might want to switch it. Um, yeah, otherwise I want guys, I want to see guys wearing ladies shirts. <laughs> All right, see you in a bit. Next on the agenda is the